at a verse of Scripture here. They've heard a lot lately. I believe the reason that God would let us want us to preach so much on this stuff is because of the times we're living in. And the book of 2 Timothy uh, definitely, definitely deals with the day and hour that you and I live in. So it still can't get the CD to work. I have it. Um, thought maybe she made a copy of it. Might do it. But anyway, let's look here in the Word of God in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 13. I want to preach this morning on the subject how to stay true to God in perilous times. How to live perilous times, emphasizing the perilous times. The word perilous means dangerous. Please, if you give me attention for a moment this morning, I want to read this scripture. 2 Timothy 2.13 Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But what do we do? Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. How to live in perilous times. Recent events, folks, have absolutely gone out the roof. We don't even have time to deal with one tragedy until there's another one taking place. I, I will not take all the time that I'd like to to deal with just the shootings. San Bernardino, out in, in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Ferguson, Baton Rouge, Orlando, Minnesota. Every day you turn on the news and you hear something bad or worse. You know that right down the road here, right down that way, in Gastonia, Charlotte, Charlotte Mecklenburg, you realize that homicide, murder, there's been more murders this year and this is only July, than there was the two previous years. Something weird is going on. It seems like the, the stops have been pulled out. It seems like they've, they've opened the gates or something and evil just flooded this world. You sort of get that feeling? Like, good night, what in the world is going on? I mean, we all saw the other night, we was at camp, and somebody texted me and told me about it. A man took a big truck like a tractor and trailer truck, went down the street like at a parade, a big event where people were out in the street, and just literally just started squashing people underneath the truck for a mile, a mile. Further from him there out there at the interstate road, he just run over one person after another, after another, after another, blood, blood, guts, people laying in the street and just running over them. What in the world? What in the world? Just about the time you think, well, we'll fix our planes. We'll fix it. No, you, you can't stop this, what's going on. It's evil unleashed on us. It's the devil, as I talked about. We all, and, and that was in Nice, France. They brought out 10,000 police reserves called up just for this weekend because of all the stuff that's going on. Now, since then, in the last couple of days, we've seen that military coup in, in uh, Turkey. And that is where the military goes in and takes over the government. And they literally declared something we've been preaching about for years the other night, martial law. You know, I've heard preachers preach about that for 30 years, that the way they do, they have all these emergencies, then declare martial law, and then the government has to help. And it happened the other night. It happened. It literally happened. Now, they got it back and got control over it. And as, as I speak right now, we're not even sure who's in control of the country of Turkey. 
Turkey is right beside Syria. Turkey's like right here, and Syria's right here. That's where all them refugees, uh, and all those other countries, Iraq, Iran, all them over there, the Middle East, that is the hot spot of the world prophetically. And all of this stuff is taking place. Um, we just saw, and I was, I was going to play a CD this morning. I can't get it to play back there. That's where I played it all the way down here. And it's called The Normalization of Perversion. The Normalization of Perversion. Listen to that phrase. We're living in a time when the perverted is being taught as normal. And in the state of Oregon now, you can look it up, they have passed a law now in the state of Oregon that a 15-year-old, you in here who have or have had a 15-year-old, a 15-year-old child can tell people at school that he feels like he wants to be transgendered he wants to become a girl. The girl, I want to become a boy. And they will get that child the operation and the government will pay for it and don't have to have permission from their parents. And the message is, the message is, listen to me, the message is, you stupid parents don't know how to raise a child. We don't need your opinion. We'll do what's best for this child. And the government pays for it. That means people like us who work and pay taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, 15-year-old can't even get their driver's license. They are being taught when they're five or six. Now, uh, do, you, do you maybe feel like you were born in the wrong body? Yes. I mean, a six-year-old child, a seven-year-old child, these are the same hypocrites that criticize us for taking our kids to church saying, well, you shouldn't push religion on them. Let them grow up and make up their own mind. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, we're living in some bad, bad times. I'm talking about really, 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 really bad. Ladies and gentlemen, when Brexit happened, which was uh, uh, London them pulling out of the EU, the European Union, our President Obama got on TV and chastised them for it and said that was a big mistake. You should have never pulled out. Now, here's the way some of y'all did. You thought, well, I listened to this news report and I listened to this news report and I don't know if they should have pulled out or not. I didn't even have to listen to the news. And I, couldn't, I, I, I think I was in Florida when that happened that week. And, and they said, uh, they're pulling out of the U, U, European Union, Brother Danny. What do you think about it? And the president came out and said, I think that was awful. They're going to be at the bottom of the list. We're going to make them pay for this. And I said, they done the right thing. Amen. If he's for it, it's wrong. Amen. Good rule to go by. Amen. Wonder who the terrorists would vote for for president if they could vote. And I ain't campaigning for nobody. We ain't got no choice, hardly. Reckon who the terrorists would vote for. You talk about controversial, that's controversial. You talk about a preacher ain't got no business talking about politics. They ain't got no business talking about religion. Shut, tell them shut up. I'm telling you, bless the Lord this morning. We're in the battle of our lives. We're in a fight for our life. You know what they say about people like me? I spew forth hate. Listen to me real carefully. I don't hate nobody. I love everybody. Sin is a sin, no matter who is or who does it. or If I do it or you do it, everybody sins a sin. It's sin to lie. It's sin to commit adultery. It's sin to get drunk. It's sin to kill somebody, right? It's sin to commit homosexuality. It's sin. It's wrong. You say, well, you're judging people. No, okay, if it's, not, if it's not wrong to be a homosexual, it is not wrong to be a murderer. The same book told us that was wrong. We got that out of the same book we got the other from. If it's not wrong to be homosexual, it's not wrong to commit adultery or to cheat on your wife or your husband because the, the same book is who taught us that. 
I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last days. There is no doubt about it. The stops are being pulled out. The devil is throwing everything he's got at us. I'm telling you, we're in a fight for our lives. If you've got, you got a child in the public school system, you're going to have to make some hard choices. It ain't like it used to be. You're, you're going to have to make some hard choices in the very near future. If you have a child in the public school system, you're going to keep running into stuff and running. And in the next few years, they say by next year, it will be normal for all of them to wear the same color of caps and gowns, not one color for the boys, not other color for the girls. That seems innocent. The restroom sign's coming down. Everything's accepted except being right. A, a little boy can say, I'm a girl, and he can go in the boy girl's bathroom, but a child in California handed out Bible verses, and they called the police, and the sheriff showed up at his house, a seven-year-old boy, and told them the kid couldn't pass out Bible verses at school because somebody might get offended. What about his rights? What about his rights of not being hurt or offended or being feel good? And we're, I'm telling you, people, some of you folks, some of you folks have this attitude of, Brother Danny, don't get up there and all this signs of the time stuff. Just that stuff makes me, it just scares me. But we better, we better. You're, you're like, uh, you're like somebody. Uh, you get a bill, they're gonna cut your power off, and you throw it in a trash can because you don't want to deal with it. And you get another notice, they're gonna cut your power off. I just won't deal with it. They're not gonna cut my power off. Oh yeah, they are. Listen, the devil's coming in the front door, people. I'm telling you, we're living in difficult, dangerous times, and it's about time we did what God said. How are we gonna how are we gonna uh, behave when protesters can throw rocks and bottles at cops and the cops are told you can't do nothing? Something something messed up there somewhere. I was always taught if a policeman told you to shut up, you shut up. If a policeman says stand over there, you stand over there. I'm not taking up for bad cops. There are bad cops. Don't listen to the devil while you're sitting there. There are bad cops, and they ought to be charged with what they do wrong. If they do wrong, they ought to go, they ought to, go to jail just like anybody else. But the big majority of them is not like that, and you know it. Amen? And I'm telling you this morning, we, we were taught when a cop tells you to stop, you stop. When a cop tells you to put your hands up, you put them up. But we're trying to overthrow authority in this country. We're trying to, listen, listen, people. Our country's being destroyed right out from under us. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Just this, just this week while we was at camp, a man grabbed a police gun, shot three or four people up over in Michigan before they could stop him. And there's no telling what we'll hear about by the time we get home today. The kids are talking about that little game, Pokemon Go. Do you realize? Hey, I'm telling you, do you realize we are having an epidemic now of people being wrecks, fights, stabbings, people being killed because they, two guys walked off a cliff in California because it, it, it whatever it is, whoever's talking, told him to walk off that cliff. Man, not even paying attention, runs his car into people. Get, getting killed. Check it out on the internet, the demonic power behind Pokemon. Oh, Dr. Ruckman said something years ago, and I never forgot it. He said, you know what our generation's doing? We are teaching kids that monsters are cute. Little monsters running around, they smile. Oh, isn't he cute? Little monsters, little monsters, and it's making them get to where they think demons are cute. The normalization of perversion. Nation shall rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Men's heart telling them for fear. I was that a little girl come to her uh, mama one time. She said, Mama, my stomach's hurt. She said, What's wrong? She said, Honey, that's because you had not eaten nothing. If you put something in it, your stomach's empty. You put something in it, you'll feel better. So she goes to school, and the teacher said, excuse me, kid, says, I, I got a headache. And the kid said, that's because your head's empty. You, better, you know, she had it wrong, but she had it right, didn't she? She had it right. I mean, buddy, we got some people teaching our kids their head's empty. Amen? 
All right, right quickly this morning, let me give you a couple things. What do we do? Do we just lock ourselves in the house and say, whatever happens, happens? Do we go along with the world? Do we just say, well, the world's changing, we have to sort of bend with... I mean, or do, what do we do? Okay, right quickly. Number one. Right quick, I'm just going to read these off and I'll be done. Number one, don't panic. We knew it was coming. We preached all these years. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And here it is. They now have synthetic marijuana. They call it K2 up in Harlem in New York. It's absolutely destroyed. They said they used to have one or two people a day out there just like this, out on the street. Can't even stand up out of their mind. Now it's five and six every hour, different ones. Look it up, K2. Synthetic pot. The flock of drug causes people to uh, just go completely crazy as a demon spirit chooses uh, to, to enter into them. What sea has no waves? None. What land has no storms? None. We've been sailing a long time in this country. We've took God for granted. We went to the lake on Sunday and laid out a church. We went to picnic and left God's house. We, were, we go swimming on church night and don't even give God a second thought. We keep God's money and blow it on pleasure. What do we expect is going to happen to our nation? Don't panic. It's coming. Number two. Keep your hope, listen to me, keep your hope unattached to this world. The Bible said we are in the world, but not of the world. Amen? We should, somebody said, well, I've I worked all my life, and I had this, and now this. And, you know, somebody's talking to me about, the, I forgot who it was. Um, good night, I don't even remember. Visiting yesterday. Oh, I can't remember. We were talking about the other day. He's talking about the 401k, and I've got to put my money in this. Or the other day when we were riding on the bus, and I said, "Look, when the money devalues, then you can't put all your trust in your money because you don't know uh, the, the the economy over there in Britain has went way down just since it went out, and that's just one nation after another after another. There's more to come." The economy's going down eventually, and we'll say, you should have known better. You should have known better to put your trust in the government to start with. L listen, uh, America can handle adversity. We just can't handle prosperity. When America's at, having hard times, we hit our knees, we do good. Then when prosperity comes, we forget God. There is no education like adversity. There's nothing that'll teach you more like having a hard time. And so don't put your hope in this world. Stay unattached. There's nothing wrong with working, nothing wrong with buying you a nice house, nice car, living comfortably. That's good. More power to you. But make sure your hope is not down here in this world. For the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Number three. Number three. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. Take what comes. Keep your mouth shut. and Thank God you ain't in hell. That's some good advice right there. That's some good advice. That's the advice I've given you from 40 years of doing this. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. Keep your mouth shut and thank God you ain't in hell. There ain't no telling what we're going to see. There ain't no telling what we're going to see. S stay prepared. Fast. Pray. You say, oh, you're a prophet of gloom. Call it what you want to. I'm just... Telling you what's going on and telling you where we're at on God's calendar. Continue. Number four, take everybody you can to heaven with you. Start with your family. Make sure everybody in your family is saved. A lot of times people criticize, oh, those little kids don't know what they're doing. Well, they might know more than some of you adults know. You don't know that. Sometimes if they're sincere and their heart's right, they, they know more than mom and daddy knows. Let me ask you a question. Is everybody in your family saved? As far as I know, everybody in my family has made a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's any of you here, or there's any of you that hear me, or any of you that I, I don't ever know, if you don't know you're saved, you better find out. 
My sister's over there. She's saved. My girls, kids, grandkids, son-in-laws, all saved. As far as I know, every one of them's put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. I plan on leaving out of here and taking my family with me when I go to heaven. Maybe not the same minute, but I'm planning on them all getting there. Amen. Most of them be dead and gone a long time before I am. Uh, but uh, uh, but I, I'm telling you something, buddy. You hear me today? You hear me? Some of you people make fun of me. I'll be visiting you and the rest of them one of these days. If you ain't careful. Take everybody you can with you. I close with this story this morning. Years ago in this country, so we've got a lot of Christians in America believing that nothing bad can happen to us and we can't have persecution because we're Christians. I ain't talking about the great tribulation. The Bible said through much tribulation you'll enter into God's kingdom. We can be persecuted. You say, well, we're not going to be here for tribulation, preacher. That don't mean we ain't going to go through tribulation. We ain't going to suffer God's wrath. That's for sure. But they Christians in Sudan and Iraq and everywhere given their lives for believing the exact same thing, me and you. They ain't but one thing keeping me from being killed this morning for what I've said. It's the power and grace of God on us and the United States Constitution. That's it. There are people. You ought to read what they say about me on the Internet. Cut his tongue out. Kill him. I'd, one guy wrote and said, I'd rather be in hell than to be in heaven with that guy. Talking about me. I said, well, buddy, you better, you better not go to heaven because I'm going to be there by God's grace. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, I'm going to be there. In 1680, a man and his wife, William and Miriam Beach. He was a godly Presbyterian preacher. Lived in a little peaceful home with him and his wife and his children in Scotland. The Presbyterian faith during those days was outlawed and the church, Catholic, supposedly run the world. That's why they call it the Dark Ages. And they knew, sooner or later, they was coming after him. That old boy had a wife, kids, 1680 people, no electricity, no cars, nothing, horseback. And he knew, he knew, they're coming after me. Eventually, they're coming after us. One night, sure as a whirl, royal Scottish soldiers bust through the front door and took William to Morpeth and put him in prison for preaching. His wife cried. She bawled. She poured out her soul to God. Now listen, we may see this before it's over with. I ain't trying to sound big and tough. I hope and pray we don't. I hope and pray we don't. But you're going to have to figure out whose side you're on stand somewhere in these days that we're living in. What are you going to do when they start passing laws against what you believe? They're already doing it in Canada in some places. Already what I've said here this morning is called hate speech. Already! Let's wake up, people! What are you going to do? You really believe the Bible or are you just putting on? Are you real or are you fake? They put him in prison. She wept and she claimed verses like trust in the Lord, fear not man, what man can do. Stuff like that. And she prayed and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed. Finally, she took off to go see her husband. And it was a long, night, bitter January day. Rode a horse and the snow was blinding her. Now, you ladies, you get mad because he went on bus route? Her husband was in prison. She rode a horse in blinding snow to that jail to see him. Got there at midnight, nearly froze to death. The guards wouldn't let her see William because it was too late at night. She sat beside a fire all night to keep from freezing to death. The next morning, she had only a very, very short visit with her husband. They said it would be the last time you ever see him. And they tore her away. She was to get on that horse and go back. She wept, but claimed Isaiah chapter 8, where he's talking about the Lord taking care of his people. 
The man that was his arch enemy was Thomas Bell. He was a wicked man, a bicker. And he said, I'll get that preacher. He'll be hanged tomorrow. And Thomas Bell was a wicked man. He went out with his friends, got drunk at night. And they was all drunk and partying. And they told him not to go home. It was too cold outside. And he wouldn't listen to them and took off on his horse. And the next day, they found him in the river, froze to death in solid ice up to his arms like that, solid block of ice. The preacher's enemy was dead. And William was freed. And he got out of jail. And he spent 40 more years with his wife preaching and witnessing and doing something for God. You're going to live in heaven with that girl. You might be next door neighbor to William and Marion Friedrich. Those are people that was willing to give their life for the gospel that you and I believe in this morning. God help us. We're a weak bunch. All of us. Let's ask God to help us to what? Continue. Continue in the things that we've learned and has been assured of. Knowing of whom we've learned them. Mom taught me there was a God and there's a Bible. The Bible was true and there's a heaven and a hell when I was that high. She used to take me and my two sisters and set us on their knee and read a big family Bible. And God put faith in my heart just as a little child. And that's what Paul told Timothy. From a child, you've known the Holy Scriptures. And you know where Timothy got it? He got it from his mother. That's why you mama's job is... 10,000 is more important time, more important. There ain't a job in the world more important than you getting the Word of God in your kid's heart. Not a career, not a degree, nothing's important as you getting God's Word in your child's heart. And he said, continue in what you know to be right. Let's do that. It'll pay off one day. One day we'll be shouting the victory on the other side. Let's do that. Let's stand this morning. Our heads bowed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I've been just messing around, messing around, ain't been living right. And I'm going to come and get down on my knees this morning. And I'm going to do business with God. Come on, something's coming already. Come on, young people, mamas, daddy, just get down on your knees. That's right, kids, come on. Thank God for teenagers coming. Thank God for adults coming. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to get your life right with God. Come on, ma'am. Come on, just slip out of your seat and come right now. Somebody be here to pray with you. Somebody take the Bible, and they'll help you this morning. That's right, kids. Come on. Thank God for you. Amen. Somebody pray with the girl over there. One of you ladies, please. Amen. Let God speak to your heart. Can we have a lady that can pray, please? Let God speak to somebody's heart here this morning. Amen. Will you let God speak to your heart this morning?